Welcome to the Sant Mot Satsang Podcast, a production of Spiritual Awakening Radio. Today, the path of the living ones, an introduction to this spiritual path, and an overview of the meditation practice being offered on the path of the masters. I reach back in time and share some passages from long ago, but we'll conclude with some passages from living ones, current living masters. I begin with the Syriac Book of the Odes. I made a congregation of living humanity among its dead and spoke to them with living lips. The following comes from the great song to the prophet Manny. You freed souls from samsara, the world of changes and ignorance, and gave wisdom. Unending, submerged in the dust of forgetting rebirths, and in an animalistic, savage, poisonous state, they were always mad. When the passion of greed poisoned them and they were dying, you prepared a medicine for them from the herb of meditation. You rescued souls from samsara. We who are miserable and with no hope would have stayed in the torture of samsara, not finding the end of your path. You set up the ladder of wisdom. You let us supersede the five forms of being, and you delivered us. We who were fettered in suffering were rescued from rebirth to see the Buddha-like sun god who is like you. For those tied to transitory pleasure, you preached the true law. You carried them across the sea of suffering to the good nirvana. For those tied to the root of attachment to the world, you revealed the road to the realm of the Buddhas. You let them find endless happiness. For those confused by the six organs of perception, you showed the rising and falling states of being. You let them be reborn in the blessed fivefold heaven of light. When you found humans needing redemption, you rescued all. You freed souls from ignorance and gave wisdom. They raved in the passion of anger. They lacked sense of our coherent thought. They lacked sense or coherent thought. And you assembled their thoughts so they understood their origin in the realm of light. Those living beings in the five states of existence, you freed from ignorance and gave them wisdom, leading them to Pari Nirvana. Many differing passions, hatred and bitterness, troubled these beings and scattered their thoughts. But, Holy Father, when you descended from the sky, the families of all thinking beings reached the peace of Nirvana. Excerpts from the great song to Manny, the great prophet Manny, as in Manichaean Gnosticism, translated in the Gnostic Bible, edited by Willis Barnstone, a very fine anthology of Gnostic and other apocryphal texts, Gospel of Thomas, Odes of Solomon, some Dead Sea Scrolls, Books of Enoch, Nag Hammadi material, a great collection, the Gnostic Bible, Back to the Syriac Book of the Odes. Whoever joins the immortal becomes immortal. Whoever delights in the living one becomes living. Gospel of Thomas. Look for the living one while you are alive, lest you die and then seek to see him, and you will be unable to see Return to the source, the path of the living masters. The audible life stream is the cardinal central fact in the science of the masters. It is the keystone of the arch. 
It is the cornerstone of the structure. It is the structure itself. And it is the path of the masters. One might say that the master and the life stream constitute the path of the masters. The world has never been without a living master. Beneath all other impelling forces in the creation, spirituality is the primary cause. That and that alone is the driving force that always leaps up to join its source. In every living being, from tiny plant up to human, the spiritual flame of life is struggling upward and onward toward its source of being. And this process and this struggle must go on until the last speck of dust returns to the central fires of infinite being. The message of the masters fills the world with hope, and at the same time it offers a rational foundation for such hope. It not only instructs people what they should do, but it offers them a definite method of doing it. In the march of the ages, cycle after cycle, on every planet where human beings reside, the great masters are the light bearers of that world. Until the end of the ages, they will remain the friends and saviors of those who struggle toward the light. The divine spark in each one, always struggling for freedom, striving hard against adverse currents, reaches out a feeble hand toward the master. In great kindness, the master takes that hand, unclean though it may be. Selections from Julian P. Johnson's great spiritual classic, Path of the Masters. This is from the hymns of Swamiji Maharaj, the Sarbachan. The God of time, or illusion, has put a cover over the teachings of saints and thus concealed them from humanity. The following are excerpts from a satsang discourse by Baba Somanath, commenting on verses of Swamiji Maharaj from his Sarbachan poetry. Swamiji, the Guru says all the world is blind. No one grasps the secret of the inner way. Baba Somanath. This is the Bani, the hymn of Param Sant Sat Guru Hazur Swamiji. He says that all the world is blind. Why? In the beginning, the Almighty Lord put the path to meet him within us and then he sent us into this world. And if that inner eye opens, then we will reunite with the Lord. But through millions of yugas, vast epochs of time and incarnations, we have been running outward. Lord Kal, the negative power, has placed the curtain of mind and maya, or illusion, over the soul and has cast it into the outer world. And becoming extroverted, the soul is always hurrying forward, never looking back to realize the true home that it left so long ago. Swamiji, everyone is wandering outside aimlessly. No one catches hold of the Shabbat, the sound within. Baba Somanath, it is just like the water and the waves. Our entire lifespan is consumed counting the waves. Millions of yugas have passed in this way. But what is the nature of a wave? It is composed of water. But if we are under the illusion that the wave is something substantial in itself, if we forget the wave is only water, if we think of the wave as something separate from the water, then we do not understand its real nature. In the same way, all the jivas, all the souls, becoming infatuated with the pleasures created by mind and maya, rush about in the external world and waste their allotted lifespan of life. Under this illusion, the jiva soul says, Who is equal to me? What shortcoming is there in me? 
We may think this, we may think that, but when the breaths finish, what remains? Only a heap of earth, nothing more. We have become so identified with this heap of earth that we think it is our true self. And in our ignorance we assert, who can compare with me? Swamiji Maharaj. The Master proclaims ceaselessly, search for the Shabad within, search for the sound current within. Baba Somanath, the Sat Guru constantly tries to make us understand. What does he tell us? Brother, take your mind away from the disturbance of this world, from I and mine, from enjoying the sense pleasures, and fix it within at the point between the two eyes, the third eye. When the mind becomes concentrated, that inner power will call you of itself. That power is the sound current, the word, the Akash Bani, the etheric sound. Concentrate your attention on that sound current. Do not look this way and that. Swamiji, only some rare worthy one stands firm on the support of the Master's words. Baba Somanath, as soon as the rare worthy disciples hear the Master's words, they take them to heart. The instant they hear those words, they act upon them. But the unworthy disciples take the Guru's words as ordinary and carelessly discard them. Who are the worthy disciples of the highest order? They meet with the true Master if emancipation is written in their destiny. Whoever has once attained the inner darshan or vision of the perfect Sat Guru, whoever has learned the inner secret, their work is accomplished. This is the highest grade of worthy disciple. Such a disciple is like a pearl oyster who swims to the surface of the water and opens its mouth to receive the raindrops that fall. As soon as it catches the swathi raindrop, it closes its mouth, and from that drop it creates the priceless, divine pearl in its within. So Swamiji Maharaj says that as soon as those rare, worthy disciples hear the Master's words, they mold their lives according to his instructions. They act on his words and do not allow their minds to wander here and there. They never listen to the advice of the mind. Swamiji Maharaj, everything of the world appears flawed and false. Only the devotion to the Master is true. Baba Somanath, those souls who remain absorbed in the Nam, the positive power, day and night, regard the world as a debased place. They understand the bonds that keep us shackled and they see clearly the nets that call the negative power has spread. Now our love and affection for this outer world is so strong that we cannot leave it. So how can our love become attached to the Lord? Love is the only way. Either you can attach it to the Nam or you can attach it to the world. Swamiji Maharaj, going into the shelter of Radha Swami, the Lord of the soul, the Jiva soul swims across the ocean of existence, the ocean of samsara. Baba Somanath, whoever does the practice of surat and shabd, will cross over the ocean of existence. Here he is referring to surat shabd yoga, inner light and sound, meditation. Exploring inner light and sound meditation. This is actually from Hermetic Tractate Number 7 of the Corpus Hermeticum of Hermes, Trismegistus. The greatest human evil is unacquaintance with God. This is a kind of gospel of the Gnostic Hermetic tradition. It's quite informative that implies initiation from a living master. 
People, where are you rushing, so intoxicated, and having so fully drunk the strong wine of reasoning, unaccompanied by acquaintance or gnosis? You cannot hold it. Already you are about to throw it up. Stop. Get sober. Look up with the eyes of the mind, the heart, or soul. And if you cannot all do so, at least those of you who can. For the imperfection that comes from unacquaintance is flooding this entire earth, corrupting the soul along with the body that encloses it and preventing it from putting in at the haven of safety. So do not all be swept away by the main current. Rather, you who can must avail yourselves of a countercurrent, take to the haven of safety, put in there, and look for a leader. Look for a teacher to show you the way to the doors of Gnosis, where there is bright light, pure from darkness, where no one is intoxicated but all are sober, fixing their eyes on that being who wills to be seen, but mentally with the eye of the soul, for that being cannot be heard or told of or seen by material eyes, only by the eye of the soul. A kind of gospel of Hermes Trismegistus found in the Corpus Hermeticum. And this is also from Hermetica. If anyone then has an incorporeal eye, let them go forth from the body to behold the beautiful. Let them fly up and float aloft, not seeking to see shape or color, but rather that by which these things are made, that which is quiet and calm, stable and changeless, that which is one, that which issues from itself and is contained in itself, that which is like nothing but itself. A fragment from the Corpus Hermeticum on the contemplative eye of the soul. The Master says, what your own eyes cannot see, your human ears do not hear, your physical hands cannot touch, and what is inconceivable to the human mind, that I will give to you. That is a, an initiation into the mysteries type saying found in the Gospel of Thomas. meditation practice of Santmat, Surat Shabad Yoga, the yoga of inner light and the yoga of the audible life stream, the inner sound. This is from the teachings of Yogani Mataji, one of my favorite chapters, found in one of my favorite chapters of the book Enchanted Land. Mataji exuded a sense of joy and happiness. We talked for more than three hours about a variety of subjects, but I was most intrigued with Mataji's experiences on the inner spiritual planes. I asked her what it was like to leave the body. Mataji responded with a beautiful description of how consciousness can be released from the mortal frame by attaching itself to the stream of celestial music radiating from the top of the head and beyond. To do this, she said, one must first be initiated by a genuine mystic who has gained access to the higher realms. The practice itself, although it may take years to master, sounds relatively simple. The body should be kept perfectly still with one particular posture held for as long as possible. One may choose a cross-legged position like the yogis in the lotus pose or a more comfortable relaxed position in a chair. Keeping the back erect and the mind alert, one continuously repeats God's name, the name or names given by his or her guru. This Simran, as Mataji termed it, should be done with one's attention centered behind closed eyes. Coupled with this physical stillness and ceaseless repetition of God's name, the next step is to contemplate the light within. 
At first, Mataji pointed out, there will only be darkness, but eventually light will appear in the form of either small flashes or small star-like points. In any case, one should focus on the radiance, keeping one's Simran intact and allowing the light to draw the soul inward. The third and most important step, Mataji said, is to listen to the sound that issues forth from the light. It is this internal music which will numb the body and allow the consciousness to leave its ordinary dwelling. By riding this current of light and sound, like a fish going upstream, the soul will be able to go back to its original home. On the journey within, however, the soul must be guided by a true master, so as to not be detained in any of the lower illusory regions. According to Mataji, what near-death patients experience is only the beginning of a vast sojourn into great universes of light, love, and beauty. How can one sit so still, repeat only holy names, and think of God constantly? By falling in love, Mataji answered serenely, because when one is truly in love, nothing but the beloved can enter one's mind. So the secret of Surat Shabad Yoga and of all mysticism, she goaded, is not necessarily practice, practice, and more practice, but love, to be so devoted to one's Lord that nothing can stand in the way. This and nothing else is the truth of Sant Mat. This is a great quote I spotted the other day. Posted at Twitter, actually. It's from Maharishi Mehi Paramahans. Meditate daily. If the mind slips down, restrain it. Meditate even a little daily. Perfection would come slowly. You need not abandon family life and be a recluse. Live with family and keep meditating. Saints have testified to this way of living with their own lives. Some encouragement from Maharishi Mehi Paramahans to meditate each and every day. It is that Simran which takes the soul outside of the compound of the realm of the mind. This is from a satsang discourse by Baba Ram Singh. Saints have adopted very simple practices, Simran, Dhyan, Bhajan, which can be practiced by human beings in this yuga age. Just pausing briefly, Simran is a term that means remembrance. The Sufis call it zikr. It is the remembrance of God and becoming re-centered again, refocused on the divine through the repetition of a sacred name or sacred names, sometimes referred to as the guru mantra, the sacred names given to the initiate by one's master at the time of initiation. Dion refers to the contemplation of inner light. And bhajan is a term for listening to the inner sound, inner sound, meditation. Saints have adopted very simple practices, Simran, Dhyan, Bhajan, which can be practiced by human beings in this Yuga age. Currently, we are pursuing all worldly thoughts, and our attention of the soul is outwardly focused in all of the material things and our thoughts outside. By doing the Simran of the five names that have been given to us by our Master and contemplating his form within, we are able to concentrate our attention at the third eye, center. And to be successful on the path, the first step is to do Simran. We have to also bring Simran into our routine. So when we start realizing that while we are doing other things also, our mind is doing Simran, 
then we should feel that we are moving on the path. Just pausing here, in addition to doing Simran or Manas Jap, the repetition, the mental repetition of sacred names during meditation, at the beginning of uh, one's meditation practice, we do Simran throughout the day whenever we can, as much as possible, as a kind of mental rosary going on in our mind. Eventually, we will discover that it goes on sort of automatically in the subconscious mind. After a while, it just sort of automatically goes on, even if we're not consciously trying to do Simran. Although we sometimes take breaks and consciously do Simran as well. But the more Simran we do during the day to spiritualize all of existence, the waking state, the easier it is when we finally get to sit for meditation. You know, it makes it easier, quicker to reach the third eye center if we've already been devoting some time to the practice of Simran. Baba Ram Singh, the whole day usually we are lost in thoughts about our worldly matters and we are continuously in those thoughts. So when we sit for meditation, then during that time, also the mind is used to or used to or habituated to thinking outwardly. Therefore, to improve our meditation, we must sit and to get better focus and attention at that time, we should try and do as much Simran as possible while we're doing all our daily routine activities and continuously try to keep doing Simran. In the Simran given by the Masters, it is that Simran which takes the soul outside of the compound or realm of the mind. It is the instructions of Kal Naringen the negative power to the mind that none of the souls should be able to cross the compound or the realm of the mind. And that is the instruction that the mind follows. That is why the mind does not like to do Simran. When we try to do Simran at first, the mind pulls us outside in all its other thoughts. So when we start practicing in the initial stages, we have to force the mind to do the Simran. So initially, we may do Simran only five or six times a day. It will gradually increase to perhaps 50 or 60 times. But over a period of time, when the mind starts getting intoxicated in the Simran, it will start doing this continuously. The Simran will become automatic. But it is very important to be at it and continue to practice, however difficult it is. St. Tulsi Sahib also said, by doing Simran, the material or gross becomes subtle. The practice of Simran is very important. It is important for us to do and focus on Simran. So even when we're not sitting in meditation, even when we are not sitting in meditation, and if in our routine we are doing Simran, and if our mind gets attuned to doing that Simran continuously, then also our meditation will improve, and we will be successful on the path. So the atmosphere is quiet, and we should get connected within. We should close our eyes and sit for meditation. I hope you enjoyed the wisdom of Baba Ram Singh our first living one. The next selection from another living teacher is from the writings of Swami Vyasanand Ji Maharaj from a book of his published a couple years back called The Inward Journey of the Soul from a section titled The Traveler of the Subtle Inner Path. Swami Vyasanand. In the words of Sant Tulsi Das, quote, the Creator has made a world imbued with positive and negative energies and attributes. But the wise Sants only take the good and leave the evil, unquote. Swami Vyasanand. The quintessential nature of Santhood or sainthood lies in that the Sants only focus on positive actions and pure attributes. Common people, however, are involved in both positive and negative actions and thoughts. 
Those lacking wisdom altogether focus exclusively on the negative and upon materialistic desires. But those who are constantly immersed in devotion to the divine are aligned with the truth. Those souls immersed in the elixir of truth and devotion are known as saints. Saints focus on spiritual qualities and are seers of the reality of consciousness. They taste the divine joy. The path followed by all the saints and their teachings is given the name Saint Mat. From times immemorial, numerous saints have appeared on this earth. These saints were born in different countries and social classes, spoke different languages, and were of different gender and ethnicities. However, the underlying principle or the truth of their teachings has always been essentially one. In spite of the variance in their origins, the goal of saints is one, realization of the divine and the attainment of the state of absolute joy and peace. Having considered the perennial wisdom found in their teachings, we can say with certainty that the underlying teachings of saints are essentially in agreement. The question arises, what is this essential teaching? The answer is the divine reality is one, and the path to realize that reality is within each of us. The path is not found in the nine gates, i.e., through the sensory organs of the body, but only through the tenth gate, the third eye or spiritual eye. This body cannot tread the path. Only the inner consciousness along with the mind, intellect, and ego principle can travel this path. However, during the last and final stages of the inner spiritual journey, the conscious soul alone journeys and reaches the divine. This path is very subtle. Saint Mehi described it as being, quote, more subtle than even the point of a needle, unquote. Saint Mat emphasizes a belief in the existence of a supreme being. According to the teachings of the Saints, it is essential to have faith in the existence of the eternal, infinite reality. As is evident, all created beings of this world are dependent upon one another for their existence and sustenance. However, the element that is the first cause is not dependent on any other thing and is self-existent beyond creation and destruction. The first cause or source is the Lord of all creation and is therefore called the Supreme Being. Time and space are created, but divine reality is uncreated and eternal. The Supreme Soul pervades all and yet transcends material creation. It is beyond the confines of time and space. It cannot be destroyed. It is infinite and indestructible. It cannot be grasped by the senses and is beyond the reach of the senses. It does not have any form, color, depth, or breadth. It is not the subject of thoughts or the senses. According to the Kena Upanishad, it is the eye of the eyes, ear of the ears, and mind of the mind. Having understood this, a persevering man or woman becomes immortal. This reality cannot be limited by or reduced to thoughts of the mind, because it is the very source of the mind. It cannot be seen by the eyes, because it is the source of seeing. It cannot be heard by the ears, because it is the source of hearing. All senses derive their power through the source, the divine reality. The divine reality is beyond the confines of this transitory creation. A part of the divine, when it comes in contact with material reality, becomes an individual soul, or jiva. Nature is impermanent, but the individual soul is a part of the divine. Swami Vyasanan, the inward journey of the soul. The individual soul is part of the divine. Or as Huzur Maharaj Vaiselagram, one of my favorite saints of the past, once said, each soul is an ansa, which means particle or spark or drop or ray of the Supreme Being, our true nature. 
Our next selection from a living one is from the teachings of Sri Bhagrath Baba, who lives at the Maharishi Mehi Ashram, on correct posture to be focused upon during meditation practice. The practitioner, if sitting for meditation, always must keep his or her head, neck, and spinal cord, the back, completely straight. The respiration process will slow down naturally if one sits straight. So it helps with meditation and jop, simran, mantra, name, repetition, practice. Maharishi Mehi has instructed to do manas jop or simran in his prose and poetry composition known as the principle of Santmat. Every human being, he says, is within his or her right to understand the truth, to transcend all the layers of nature, darkness, light, and sound, through devotion to God by taking recourse to spiritual practices such as manas jap, mentally repeating with eyes closed some holy word instructed secretly by the living spiritual preceptor. Manas dion, concentration and meditation over some holy figure, or concentration upon some holy figure with eyes closed as instructed secretly by one's spiritual preceptor. Dristi sadhana, the yoga of inner seeing, the seeing of inner light. And surat shabad yoga, the yoga of inner hearing, the yoga of inner sound, inner sound meditation. And to attain salvation through re-identifying with the Supreme. A quote from Maharishi Mehi from his Principles of Santmat, excerpted from the Padavali. Sri Bhagrath Baba. Upon closing eyes, everyone sees the darkness inside, no matter whether they belong to one creed, caste, country, or another, be they young, old, male, female, scholar, or illiterate. This darkness has not been created by humans or gods. This darkness has been created by the Supreme Sovereign God. There are three layers or coverings over the jiva atma, the individual soul. Those are darkness, light, and sound. Darkness is the shadow of the light. This darkness is the first layer that the jiva soul, all beings, encounter. One who crosses this layer of darkness through a special kind of meditation sees the inner light within oneself. This inner light is called Atma Alok, light of the self, or Brahma Prakash, divine light. On achieving this, the Divya Dristi, inner gaze, divine eye, third eye, opens completely. While mentally gazing into the darkness that one sees with eyes closed, one should repeat the Guru-instructed mantra. This process is called Manas Jap, or Simran. While doing this, neither the lips nor the tongue move. Instead, the mantra, an alphabetical name given by the Master, is repeated within by the mind. This Jap, this sacred name, mental chant, Simran word, is actually a kind of meditation. Repeating the mantra through the mind is for the purpose of calling the Isht, one's ideal, the most beloved, Satguru, near oneself. So the practitioner who does Jap should perform it with great love. The beloved becomes happy and merciful if one does Jap, the Simran, with immense love and devotion, prem and bhakti, and he appears at the desire of the devotee, living one Sri Bhagrath Baba, on inner light meditation and on the posture, correct posture, and finally on the sound from living one Swami Akutanan from his great book on Surit Shabad Yoga known as Inner Light and Sound Meditation Practice. The Yoga of Inner Light and Sound. 
on inner sound meditation, Swami Akutanan says, the ascension of the soul in the reverse direction of flow of streams of sounds can thus be compared to the swimming of fishes. Hence the yoga of sound has also been referred to as Minamarg, the path of fish. Thus climbing further and further, leaving all the five spheres behind one after another. The soul finally transcends even the domain of the quintessential unstruck sound and merges into Anami, the nameless, soundless, supreme being, the supreme conscious state. To be one with, merge with the supreme Godhead, to be reunited with God. Thus the path of Yoga Bhakti gets completed. Swami Akutanand on merging with the Supreme Being who is beyond the light, beyond the sound, in the nameless, soundless state, Anami Parush, referred to by some as Radha Swami, Lord of the Soul. Today on this Santmat Satsang podcast, The Path of the Living Ones. Thank you for joining me. Thank you.